Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about how I've done the basic build and setup of this model here. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that this is the Finwin Hobby Transformer Wing. Now, you can actually build this in lots of different ways. You can have it with one motor at the back, two motors. You can have it with four motors or even five motors if you really wanted to. And it's one that had a fantastic reaction. So I'm going to build it out in this video. The build itself is not particularly complicated. It's kind of covered in the manual that you get with the model itself. You can download it from the website. I'll put a link in the description. But it's also going through how I've set the radio up because initially I'm going to fly this manually and just make sure everything's all working fine and then we'll end up probably another video popping a flight controller in it and then we'll probably do some funky stuff about camera triggering because the cool thing about this model is it does have a big hole in the middle that allows for a downward facing camera so you can either have two FPV cameras and switch between the two or what I'm thinking of doing is popping a pix hook in this I did the mini uh, Eagle Tree Vector builds just before Christmas, so I've just done one of those recently. Probably time for me to revisit the Pixhawk and the Ardu Pilot stuff again. Get a Pixhawk cube. I've got one that has this little attachment at the bottom rather than the big standard carrier board that you're used to seeing. Pop that in the middle and then also set that up to do that shutter camera control stuff so that it could be used for mapping because that's also something that I've had a couple of questions about. This is probably a worthwhile doing it on this. So before I get into all of that detail, the first thing I need to figure out is what kind of props and motors I'm going to put on here. Um, I'm actually using 1300 kV and looking at the thrust detail for these particular props, I'm interested in using a 3S battery. Um, most people would use 4S or bigger on something like this. The reason I want 3S is because it allows me to replace the 3S with a similar lithium ion pack and as per my video a little while ago, lithium ion is a great way to get really, really long flight time. So I'm after efficiency. And the best efficiency that I could see in this table that I like the look of was using a 3S battery with the eight inch props. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here with these motors. So the first job to actually put this thing together is to screw in the retaining clip for the front of the canopy. Uh, the front of the canopy uh, slides in using two supports and it's only held in there by this one clip. Now on mine the wood was already pre-installed so it's just a case of using some of the supplied screws. There's a massive bag of screws that comes with this. Most of them are kind of wood tap screws because a lot of the supports are wood tap. So just use a couple of the short wood screws to pop that in place and that's going to make sure that the front canopy is going to stay in position. This is also where the main battery is going to go so you do need to make sure that that's all done. You don't want this front piece ejecting out and unplugging the battery if it uh, happens to have a bit of a hard landing. Next thing to do then was install the wooden supports at the back of the two motors. Just be careful, there are a couple of different pieces of wood that pre-cut here. One fits beautifully into the back, it's going to be a single engine build, or you're going to have an odd number of engines with one at the back and maybe two or four at the front. And there's also these bigger pieces, and these are the ones that you need to use for the forward facing nacelles. So just screw those onto the back. There are the right length of screws and lots of them in the pack, so make sure you're using the right ones. And then you screw them into the front of the nacelle itself. Those long screws are actually screwing into something that's held in place by this wooden batten behind the front and the nacelle, so it all seems pretty solid. I may have later on maybe put a bead of glue in between the wood behind the motor and the wooden support itself, but for the moment I don't think that's needed. Next job was then to cut free the elevons at the back of each of the wing. You're going to need a really sharp blade for this. A brand new X-Acto knife is perfect. Just run it along each side. Using a straight edge will make sure you keep it nice and neat and pull out that piece and then operate the hinge. Just make sure that it's nice, free and clear and you're ready for the next step. I glued in the wooden supports for the servos underneath each of the wing. This was pretty much the only gluing that I needed to do on this one that I have here. Uh, these wooden supports are going to be great because you're going to screw these 17 gram servos into them in a moment. These are Finwin Hobby 17 gram servos as well. So they uh, are designed to fit beautifully into the slots. With those in place, just screw in the Elevon control horns onto the control surfaces at the back of the wings. Again, that's just a simple job of screwing them in. They have a nice, big, meaty connection, and all of the stuff on this feels very industrial. Uh, hopefully, it's going to survive a lot, of, uh, a lot of flying hours. 
Once that's in place and the servos are ready, then I use my old trick of using a servo checker just to 90 degree all of the servos. I'm using the round servo horns here at the top for maximum strength and the control rods that came as part of the kit just kind of push through the holes uh, with a little bit of effort so there's no drilling or anything messing about. And then it's just a case of popping them through the control horns at the back and then nipping them up. Last couple of jobs then is to connect the ESCs onto those motors, put them in the recesses under the wing. I'm probably going to end up 3D printing some covers for these just to help protect them in the event of a landing. And then the last thing is to start wiring the receiver up. So let me just show you how I've got the radio set up here. It's a pretty standard wing configuration. So the only real difference here is that what I've done is I've actually mixed a little bit of rudder into each of the motors. So each of the throttles on channel one and channel four have the rudder control mixed in. So if I've done it right, I'll be able to yaw the wing around by using the rudder that will actually increase and decrease the engine slightly so that I can actually turn quite nicely and that should hopefully minimize waggle of the wing along with the very large vertical tail fin at the back as well. So now it's all together and plugged in. And if you're interested in seeing how this all goes together and how to set up a wing, go and check out my introduction to flying wings for quadcopter pilots and my basic airplane setup videos for OpenTX. They explain every single one of the processes I would have gone through to set this up. Now it's all in one piece. Balance the props, put them on, just double check it all looks okay on the ground and it's time to go and give it a test flight. Okay, so off to the field. So this is a video of the maiden flight and a massive thank you to my friend Ross here for providing the hand launch to get us into the air. Now we're launching into the wind, it's a pretty stiff breeze on this maiden day, about 15 miles an hour, pop the throttles up to about 70%, Ross gives it a good old hike and it absolutely wow. goes for the sky. Now this thing with the battery I've got in it, it's a 5,000 milliamp hour 3S battery with those eight inch props. The whole, whole thing's weighing about 1,479 grams. So I wasn't expecting it to fly this well, but it is flying beautifully stable and very nicely indeed. And I'm not having to do any trimming at all. The control surfaces are exactly in line with the back of the wing. The center of gravity is just behind the spar as per the manual for when you have this twin motor setup and everything seems absolutely perfect and i must admit when i'm flying here i'm keeping the volume down in the background but you can hear ross and i chatting if uh, if i turn it up just a little bit but i'm really really impressed at how beautifully it flies because on the ground it feels quite ungainly and the squeaks from the foam as it moves around as soon as it gets into the air it's a completely different beast the other thing i'm noticing here is that again it looks ungainly on the floor but in the sky it looks amazing and my friend Ross was talking about the fact it does look like a Vulcan bomber and that for those of you that might not be familiar with it was a, a, a bomber back from the 70s that used to be at all the air shows here in the UK a big delta wing and this thing does look really nice in the air that bulbous nose which looks kind of wacky on the floor absolutely seems to be in its element in the sky. Now I'll put some stats, facts and figures on here of how much battery was consumed and how much had left and the overall fly time. I won't show you the entire thing here. Suffice it to say that it was a beautiful flight. The only thing I will do, let me just skip to the end of the flight and just show you how this thing landed. Uh, Ross and I really weren't sure about how this thing would come into land with it being so large and having such big props. But one of the surprising things is how much floatiness this thing has it really doesn't want to stall and on the landing it came in well past where i expected it to and then gently settled down into the grass so very very pleasantly surprised with this and this is something that i think we need to do a little bit more with now i've gone to the trouble of building it so looking forward, I think that this twin motor setup is very different from all the other wings that I've made. Be aware though, because it has more than one rotor, some countries may class it as a multi-rotor and it may be subject to some different legislation. Using the 3S power with the 8-inch props, 
is working beautifully and both the motors and the ESCs are absolutely cool. I'm not running them hard at all. Now I'm using 30 amp ESCs, which are probably a little bit too big, but these are the ones from Hobby King. Uh, they're cheap as chips. I think they're about seven pounds a piece, if that. Um, and popped underneath with some little clips in place, they haven't even started to get warm. I have mixed that differential thrust in, but to be honest, I was so interested in doing the maiden flight, I didn't really play with that much. I think that's something that we can explore in future videos. And talking about future videos, because this has the ability to shoot images down out of a camera, I think it's about time that we put some kind of flight controller in this, because that flight was absolutely manual with nothing else in at all. That was just all me flying it around. And it is very stable for a wing of this type. So I'm going to put a Pixhawk cube in this, I think, rather than anything else. The reason I'm going to do a Pixhawk cube is because with it having the downward facing camera elements, I can pop the downward facing camera in and hopefully with a bit of help from my friends at 3DXR, I can get that rigged up and do a video and show you how that works. Because using something like this for mapping or surveying would be fantastic. And it's a very inexpensive wing for those kind of applications. So join me in future videos because you'll be seeing more of this wing. Initial setup and build and flight of this have been very enjoyable indeed. And although being very large, which makes it more interesting to transport, and once you've got it together, it's actually quite difficult to take it apart, put it in the boot. But once you get over the size, it does mean that it's going to be a very versatile platform to do things like surveying and potentially endurance stuff as well. But there are probably better options if you just want a wing to hoot around an FPV with. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.